Make sure you watch all the way to the end because the people this affects are different. Now let's crack on with the first molecule and that's glucosamine and chondroitin. So glucosamine is a popular treatment for something called osteoarthritis, which is a condition that affects um, the joints, leads to degeneration and um, is characterized by very painful and stiff joints, usually affects older people. And uh, part of the reason is that the cartilage in between, for example, the main joints of the knee starts to wear and basically bone rubs, uh, starts to rub against bone at the extreme end and it can be very painful. And the idea of taking glucosamine, which is something called an amino monosaccharide, is to rebuild the joint, rebuild the cartilage. Uh, because the thinking was that the body can use the glucosamine to rebuild the cartilage and therefore alleviate the symptoms of osteoarthritis. Now, that was the thinking. And up until 2017, 2018, it, this was, it was widely recommended in the British health system. But then they looked, they sat down, the health authorities, they got all the experts together, sat in a room or somewhere, and they looked at the evidence or the reviews or the meta-analysis, or the, they concluded that glucosamine doesn't really make much of a difference to osteoarthritis. And that's the reason I no longer recommend it. If somebody wants to come in and buy it themselves and try it, it's fine, you don't need a prescription for it. But I always share with people that uh, the evidence is that it doesn't really make much of a difference. The only thing it helps with, it reduces the level of pain slightly. By the way, if we haven't met before, my name is Jabril. I'm a pharmacist based in the UK. Move on to the next product that I no longer recommend, and that is cough syrups. I don't recommend cough syrups, and me personally, I can count on the fingers of one hand the amount of times that I've had cough syrups myself. The reason is they do nothing. They don't work. They don't speed up the healing or recovery from a cold or a cough. Experts here in the UK have over many years looked at the evidence to support the use of cough syrups and every time the conclusion is the same. You are better off just drinking some hot water with a bit of lemon and honey to recover from a cough or to soothe your cough. In the last year, many, many brands, I think about 15 brands of cough syrups have actually been withdrawn from the shelves here in the UK because they've been linked with serious adverse effects. So I think the tide might be turning. The time might be coming very soon where you won't really find anyone selling any cough syrups at all. But my personal tip to help with a cough is either the lemon, uh, warm water with a bit of lemon and honey or just the lozenge, uh, those boiled sweets that you just uh, suck you know, as needed and help coat the back of your throat. Quick question, do you buy health products like supplements? And are you confused about which supplements actually work and which ones are a complete waste of your time and money? Well, over the last few months, I spent hundreds of hours researching this very question. And I've come up with 21 supplements that actually work according to science and seven supplements that you should probably avoid. All those supplements and the research proving them in this short ebook, which you can grab today for only seven dollars. The next one is probably the most controversial and the one that I'm really struggling with the most because it's so ingrained in people's psyche that this has you know this benefit, and it's omega-3 fish oils for preventing heart disease and strokes. So. For decades, people have been um, taking omega-3 to prevent heart disease and strokes. And the idea was that the rates of heart disease were so low in countries where they eat a lot of fish oil, like yeah, Japan and the Mediterranean countries, Italy, Spain, Greece, those kind of countries, that the thinking was, okay, great, we just take fish oil as supplements and we'll have a very low heart uh, disease rates like you know like those countries it hasn't really worked out that way in terms of when we look at the research and now since about 2017 2018 the uk health authorities no longer recommend the routine 
prescribing of uh, fish oils, of omega-3 fish oils, uh, but only sp we're talking about specifically for the prevention of heart disease and strokes. We're not talking about all the other benefits. It's um, quite a strange one. You would think that um, if we copy what those countries who eat a lot of fish oils do, then the rates of heart disease would be the same as them. It's not really that simple, I don't think, uh, because the, the, those countries' diets is not only different from Western diets, for example, in the UK and the US, with just the fish oils. Uh, their diet is different in many other ways. They eat, they probably eat more olive oil. They um, eat more vegetables, more fruit. So omega-3 fish oils can still be prescribed in the UK if recommended by a specialist because there is strong evidence that it can benefit certain people with genetically driven very high cholesterol. So some people have naturally very high cholesterol or triglycerides due to some genetic abnormalities. There is evidence that omega-3 fish oils helps those types of people. I no longer recommend is homeopathy. So if you don't know what homeopathy is, it's uh, the idea of treating illness with uh, in a like for like way so for example if somebody has a stomach bug they the homeopathy thinking says to treat the stomach bug you would treat it with a very small dose of the bug that caused the stomach bug and when i say a small dose i mean minute you know parts in a million so that's the thinking and up until you know the last 15 years it was very popular it had a very strong following but then uh, there's been a shift. So in 2016, the Wirral Health Authorities, which is a, a large metropolitan area that includes the city of Liverpool in the north of England, in 2016, they banned all homeopathic treatments from their list of approved uh, medicine. And in 2018, the Royal Hospital of Homeopathy in London, which opened back in 1849, uh, closed all its services that provided homeopathic treatments except for private patients. So if you wanted to get homeopathic treatments on the National Health Service from that hospital, that service was closed. And the reason for all this is a very simple. Despite multiple reviews and analysis by top experts in the US, in the UK, and a huge one in 2015 in Australia, just not being able to find solid evidence that homeopathic treatments works. And um, a lot of healthcare experts say that, you know, it's probably placebo effect at best. A very quick look before filming this video at the uh, one of the major websites for homeopathy in the UK uh, to see what their take is on all this. And they seem to be suggesting that the reason these studies did not pick up the benefits of homeopathy is because of the way the studies were designed uh, which they said was flawed and they quoted multiple other studies that um, proved that homeopathy has a benefit of course it goes without saying that if in the future new research comes out that shows the benefit of any of the uh, supplements or products that i discussed in this video then I'm going to start recommending it again. So the evidence dictates what I recommend and that's how it should be with all health professionals. What about you? Do you use any of these products? Have you seen any benefit in them personally? Let me know in the comments below.